everyone. My name is Sarah, and uh, today I'm going to present to you our paper titled Should You Upgrade Official Docker Hub Images in Production Environments? To start, let's begin with containers. Containers are standalone lightweight units of software that package software code and all, all of its dependencies inside it. And as these containers are very lightweight, you can run multiple of them on one host operating system. Now, Docker is most famous. Um, Docker is the most famous um, containerization framework, and Docker Hub is Docker's public and uh, default registry. Docker Hub has a total of num uh, total of um, 130 billion number of pools of images. It has three and a half million uh, repositories, and also it has five million users. Uh, Docker images facilitate the deployment of applications in production environment. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that by running just one command, you can get an uh, image from a repository on Docker Hub on your machine. And again, by running another command, you can create a running container from that image. So it's very easy uh, to use containers and images using Docker. Now, each Docker image is created from a Docker file. For example, here you can see a sample of Docker file. And, um, but, and in each image, we can see that there are multiple packages that are adding to it. For example, based on the operating system that you are using for the image, there might uh, it might add some packages, some specific packages to the image, or based on the languages uh, you're installing or libraries that you want to use. Um, for example, here we have Python libraries and Node.js that are being added to this image. So. Using Docker images in production environment is very easy, but it increases the risk of package changes as there are many packages uh, installed in, a, in that image. So in this, in this study, we quantify the package changes in Docker images across different applications. In order to conduct our study, we needed to, um, we divided our step into four steps. First, we needed to select some repositories, some sample repositories for our study. Then we collected uh, image tags for those repositories. After that, we needed to uh, collect and extract packages and latest update date uh, for those images. And finally, we needed to identify package changes that were happening in those images. So now let's have a more detailed look at it. Uh, first of all, we need to select some repositories. There are overall four types of repositories on Docker Hub. Firstly, we have the uh, community repositories, which are basically developed by community developers. And this is the majority of repositories available on Docker Hub. Then we have verified repositories, which are developed by third party vendors, such as uh, Microsoft or IBM. Then we have official repositories, which are um, repositories that are reviewed by a team from Docker. And finally, we have certified repositories, which are just a special category of verified repositories. Now for this study, we are going to focus on the official repositories. And um, the reason that we selected these uh, repositories is that these uh, official repositories are more popular than other type of repositories. For example, here you can see the comparison of number of star counts between community and official repositories. And the reason that we don't have the uh, verified and certified repositories here is that uh, the data for those repositories were not available on Docker Hub. And again, if we compare uh, the number of pool counts, we can see that again, uh, official repositories are downloaded more often than um, other type of repositories. So um, for this study, we decided to focus on the official repositories. Now, there are 160 official repositories on Docker. And uh, for each of those repositories, we extracted and retrieved uh, the repository tags. And in total, there were 37,000 repository tags. After that, uh, for each of those tags, we uh, pulled the image and extracted the packages inside that image. And also we got uh, the latest update date. Um, after that, uh, we needed to break down each repository into some branches. Now, what do I mean by branch? 
Well, uh, in each repository, there could be uh, multiple branches developed separately over time. And um, these branches could uh, possibly use, um, be developed for different operating system or use different uh, technologies. And uh, comparing images from different branches would not be insightful as they are basically different. Um, so we separated the images based on the uh, naming of the uh, images into some branches. After that, we sorted the images based on the uh, latest update date in each branch, and we needed to identify package changes. Now, there are three types of change that could happen. There could be a major change, which means um, there was an incompatible API change, or there could be a minor change, which, uh, which uh, means that there is a um, added function functionality, which is also backward compatible, or there is a patch change, uh, which means that there is a backward compatible uh, bug fix. Now that uh, we identify package changes, we're going to use this information um, to answer the question that which type of application tend to have more package changes. So now let's uh, look at the results. We found that there is a median of 8.6 upgrades per image uh, across official Docker images. And for example, in here, you can see that application services category of images had the highest number of upgrades uh, in all type of um, changes. Uh, we can also see that um, there was a median of 2.1 downgrades per image across of, uh, all of the official Docker images. Um, and we also noticed that images of analytic applications are the least stable ones as these images had the most number of packages inside them. And we also noticed that the packages that are changed most often and commonly, um, the, these are the common utility packages. And uh, for example, uh, and from like uh, the 9,000 packages that overall they were used in the official Docker images, the top one, which had the most number of uh, changes but utility packages such as TZ data or base files. So in conclusion, uh, in-place upgrading of Docker images in production environment has a high risk of package changes. And all of the practitioners need to be very cautious when doing in-place upgrades of images from official Docker Hub in repositories, as in all study applications, many packages were changing. So let's have a recap. Uh, our methodology consists of four major steps. We needed to collect images, uh, sorry, collect the, uh, we needed to select repositories and then collect uh, the image tags for those uh, repositories, which we selected official repositories. After that, we needed to extract the packages and latest update date for them. And finally, we needed to identify the changes that were happening in those packages. Uh, and our major finding were that um, there was a median of 8.6 upgrades per images across the official Docker images. And also we noticed that there was a median of 2.1 downgrades uh, per image across official Docker images. So it's a very good practice um, to always be cautious about upgrading um, Docker images in uh, production environments as there could be many changes happening in those uh, packages that these images are using. Thank you for your time and attention. Okay, so we're live with the Q&A session. Um, hello, my name is Francisco Cervant. I'm gonna be chairing this Q&A session and we have Sarah Golami who did this work at the University of Alberta. Uh, we already got one question, so I'm gonna go straight to it. Uh, Robert is asking, is there consistency among versioning? Um, so so did, you, did you account for different kinds of updates, right? Minor or major updates? Uh, yeah, we, I mean, in the work we counted like um, when we're checking like the updates based on the semantic versioning of the like version numbers of the packages, we divided on like, we decided like whether it's 
a major uh, change or minor or patch change, like uh, based on the semantic versioning format. I'm not sure uh, if that's uh, answer your question. Well, I see. So it's, he's asking also if if minor updates to the Docker image only contain minor updates to the software packages, or a minor update to the Docker image could also have major updates of the software packages, so making the thing more oh. risky than it should be. Mm, yeah, I mean, um, there isn't anything that says that uh, if it's minor up update of a pa image, necessarily all of the changes inside it for other for the packages that they are using will be minor or less. So it, it should be checked. Like we could have like even a minor change, like minor upgrade for the image, but like many major changes happening inside them. There wasn't any like sort of consistency in that, no. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, I, I'll ask you one of my questions while others uh, think of theirs. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, given what everything you learned with this with this work, how do you think we could do better, right? And, and particularly in documentation, do you think that better documentation will improve expectations for people on, on upgrades? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if like uh, you are upgrading your image uh, to a new version, if you list like uh, like packages that you are changing inside it, uh, then people who might use the, those packages um, in their application, um, I mean, it, it, it's a good idea to be to notify them because uh, like if I'm writing a software, I would like a specify a specific versions of the packages that I want to use so that they would be work they would work together because like there might be an upgrade in a package that is not uh, backward compatible and just break the whole system. So if we could sort of can uh, tell the downstream users that what, what are the changes in the image, exact changes, then um, we can manage the expectations and hopefully have less breakdowns in the systems. Thank you. So I'll give a bit more time for questions from the audience. Okay, I'll, I'll ask you another question in the meantime. Um, so the other thing that I was interested in when, when about your work is, so can you speak a bit about what kind of verification, what kind of tests or, you know, yeah, what kind of testing do they do to these packages before releasing them? And, and should they do something different so that, again, the expectations are more clear on what you're getting with an upgrade? Uh, well, as far as I know, is that uh, and we specifically like tested uh, official Docker app images, and based on like uh, the documentation that Docker provided, they are like um, testing these images and uh, like testing the from the security perspective. But um, I'm not sure whether even they care that uh, like some patches inside these images are changing and how it could affect them because there wasn't mon much documentation on this. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what sort of testing or documentation they are. 